In 2012, Nintendo launched the Wii U. However, even though the system had tons of hype, it's been in a crisis. Sales have dipped, games have come out and collected dust at stores, sitting unsold to the point where even blowout sales can't even move the console, and third parties have refused to make games for the system because of this. The releases of the Xbox One and PS4 have only sped up the death of the Wii U, with more and more people buying Xbox Ones and PS4s in a shorter amount of time than the Wii U. Now, it seems strange that third parties would dump the console so quickly. I mean, after all, during E3 2011, Nintendo was determined not to make the same mistake they did early on with the 3DS. They announced partnerships with developers, showed demo reels of footage from other versions of the games on other platforms, and rattled off a strong launch lineup with games such as Darksiders 2, Assassin's Creed 3, Mass Effect 3, the newest Call of Duty, which was Black Ops 2, and I don't mean a watered-down version like the Wii version, I mean the version that could compete with the PS3 and 360 version, and various others. With EA, even them, a company known for historically bad relationships with Nintendo, even going up on stage during the Nintendo conference to announce a partnership, which fell through apart, presumably after games bombed, to the point where even people inside companies like EA were making jokes about the Wii U. Now, what could possibly have gone so wrong with this console to the point where people inside a company that just a few years earlier announced a partnership with them were now making jokes and parodying the console? Well, the first thing we need to do is start off at square one, the games. There's a company called Digital Foundry who's pretty well known in gaming for their side-by-side -side comparison tests. They also make custom capture hardware for game companies and companies involved in the gaming industry with clients that include many game developers, and they have a long list on their website. However, in gaming, like I said, they're well known for their side-by-side -side comparison tests, where they'll play the games normally in a single player mode and then do a few multiplayer matches record the frame rates of an average game with their proprietary hardware while partnering with the website Eurogamer and then analyze them while providing video footage with the frame rates marked for comparison purposes and they are pretty well known for showing when a game is inferior over the other version ever since the Wii U first came out Unsurprisingly, Digital Foundry has been doing analysis of all Wii U games, and in each video they've made and analysis, there has been a common trend in nearly every single Wii U game. Almost all of them will look worse in comparison to the 360 or PS3 version of the same game. When the frame rates are measured, it's always in the same order. The PS3 and 360 versions of the game will run full speed at 60 FPS or 30 FPS, or with the PS3 case, slightly behind, while the Wii U will be about 10 to 20 frames per second behind the Xbox 360 and PS3. Now, as Microsoft and Sony have thrown their next-gen consoles into the game, the situation has gotten even worse for Nintendo. The Wii U has looked even more dated, receiving 360 ports, while the PS4 and Xbox One get the next-gen versions. Even with games that look marginally better, like Most Wanted U, you'll have limitations such as 6 players on the Wii U versus 8 on the PS3 and 360 for multiplayer matches. Now, this is a major problem for Nintendo and for gamers. After all, for a system that called itself next-gen and showed itself off with the Garden Tech demo back in E3, blowing everybody away with that one Zelda demo, you would have thought that the system would have been easily able to handle a 360 port or handle a PS3 game. But no, it's having issues already. Imagine if the PS1 had trouble running a Super Nintendo game when it first came out, or if the Super Nintendo had issues running an original Nintendo game. 
If anything, it's like some of the early 3D consoles, such as the Atari Jaguar, before the PS1, N64, and Saturn came out. The Jaguar was advertised as 64-bit 3D, and at best, it was capable of looking like a Super FX game, and at worst, looking like a bad Super Nintendo game. I mean, sure, there were games like Rayman or um, the early 3D games such as Cybermorph or whatever, but they didn't look like anything you couldn't easily do with the Super FX chip or 32X or whatever. And the 32X actually was the same way. It was an add-on for the Genesis. It failed too. It wasn't capable of that much, and both the Jaguar and the 32X ended up fading into obscurity at first, piling up in bargain bins, and then when the internet gaming community became big, became the butts of many jokes on the internet. And speaking of the Jaguar, just like the Wii U, it was technically constrained. Despite supposedly being 64-bit, it was actually two graphics chips being driven by a Motorola 68000, and it lacked a sound chip. So games like Doom released with embarrassingly no sound, and games had terrible graphics. Does this sound familiar to you? Now, the Wii U, however, can't be that bad. I mean, developers, they were praising it in that short Nintendo clip, right? However, in the real world, the Wii U has been a total flop among developers. Sure, there's a developer like, um, the developers of Trying 2 or Shannon, who nobody's heard of, praising it. But for every developer like them, which doesn't have too much console experience, you'll have industry veterans coming out and criticizing the console. For example, UBISoft. Just, here's the recent one from 2014. Even if they're not straight up criticizing it, there will be hints that the console isn't up to snuff. For example, one of them, UBISoft, like I said, they said Watch Dogs on the Wii U will skew closer to the current gen version. And by current gen, they mean 360 and PS3. Not PS4, not Xbox One, Wii, PS3 and 360. Now, keep in mind, those consoles came out in the mid-2000s, back when SATA was new, back when, um, back when rap music was still on the charts, back when Nextels were the cool things and before iPhones came out, back when smartphones were Windows Mobile, back when people used Windows XP. That is a long time in tech years. Here's another gold one. Epic Games, a company with very talented people working there, keep in mind... They made the probably the most used engine this generation. They came out and said that the new Unreal Engine 4 would not support the Wii U and that the previous generation version would be a better fit. And then that but they did say that anybody making a Wii U game could port the Unreal Engine 4 to the Wii U. But even today, Epic Games who recently updated the Unreal Engine 4 to support the Xbox One and the PS4 new next-gen consoles, it doesn't support the Wii U. And it's up to the licensee, the person who licenses the engine, to port the Unreal Engine 4 to the Wii U, which is a bad sign because the Unreal Engine 3 was used a lot, and the Wii U might lack a ton of games because of this as well. Crytek, however, was warmer toward the console saying that it was only on par with the Xbox 360 and PS3. And even then, there has only been one Wii U game shipping so far with the CryEngine 3, and that is Sonic Boom. Despite not being out yet, I don't want to place bets on how much it's held back by from hardware, but... The 15 FPS quote pre-alpha screenshot might give you a little hint that the Wii U isn't too powerful. And the Wii U version of Crisis 3 was cancelled due to a quote lack of business support, presumably due to bad sales of Wii U software in general. I'll get to that later, but until Sonic Boom comes out, we may never know how well the CryEngine 3 will run on the Wii U. Even with the few Nintendo-only developers or indie developers that make games on Nintendo praising the console, you've also had 
things, little things in the stuff they've said that pretty much proves that with the Wii U and stuff, it isn't all what it's cracked up to be. Even though they said it was better than the Xbox, despite never ever shipping a game on a Microsoft Xbox platform, there was a little thing on what they said. They said that with it, it was not a big leap hardware power-wise. Keep in mind, this is a little precursor to what I'm going to say later. They said if these people, they've never developed a non-Nintendo game. They talk about how the Wii U is the best. They say that it's not a big leap hardware power-wise. Keep this in mind for what I'm about to say next. But now I have to finish talking about what developers have said. Even develop, even other developers like Trine's 2 developer, despite praising it, compared it with the Xbox 360, a 2005 console. But now it's time for the most damning bombshell. Some posts and tweets from employees at a company called EA. Now, EA is a major company, and despite loudly vocal comments on message boards about how they are public enemy number one and the worst company in gaming, they seem to be doing something right because many games they've made, people talk about. From Mass Effect, to Mirror's Edge, to Battlefield, to Dead Space, and various others, while the games keep selling to the point where they keep making more. DICE is a major developer known for making the Battlefield series and the Frostbite engine, an in-house engine that EA has liked so much because of its capability for amazing graphics, huge maps, and being versatile, allowing it to be in racing games, real-time strategy games, and other kinds of games, even Plants vs. Zombies spin-offs. It's no surprise that EA wants to use it for their next-generation games. Considering how Battlefield 4 is known for looking amazing with 64 people, big maps on the Xbox One and PS4, it's easy to see why. However, when DICE tried to port the last version, Frostbite 2, to the Wii U, they ran into some issues with the hardware, about how the performance wasn't that great. It eventually got to the point where a DICE employee made a joke with the Twitter account about how Half-Life 3 and that stuff was coming exclusively on the Wii U powered by Frostbrite. This did not go over well with many people who can't take a joke, but can make jokes about Microsoft and Sony, and eventually they had to take the tweet down. But that's not as bad to those people as another tweet an EA Canada employee made. However, this wasn't just any normal employee. This was a senior software engineer and architect who's been working since the 90s at EA and before that at Psygnosis or whatever that company's called, who made a wipeout, I think. And he's been working in the game industry for over a decade, making games for many consoles and shipping many titles at EA Canada. So, what was his thoughts on the Wii U? And keep in mind, EA Canada did ship a Wii U game, FIFA 13. So, what were his thoughts? The Wii U is crap. This is his actual words. This is what he said, plain and simple. This isn't just something. He just said the Wii U was crap, and he also criticized Nintendo's policies and said it was weaker than a 360. And criticized it heavily. Now, this is a major thing, too. EA isn't just some RAM developer. They've made many big games on the 360 and PS3, and already are making some games on next-gen consoles that are selling a lot. For every Madden that they sell, there will be a game like Mirror's Edge or Dead Space that people will still talk about. And especially with the new Star Wars sequels coming, the Star Wars games by them are going to be missing out on the Wii U, and yet will be selling a bunch, probably, and an article in 2013 claimed 15 upcoming games as of then were missing out on the Wii U. EA's not the only one, as many other developers from Bethesda to Take-Two to others don't support the console. Or barely support it at all. So from what has been stated here, we're looking at a console which has had a rough time with hardware. And developers have said it's weak, 
even the ones praising it have only said it's about as powerful as a 360, and developers hate programming for it, and many of some of them even hate Nintendo's policies. However, nothing much is known on the hardware. However, some posts give us clues on which part of the system is weak. For example, Koei said the Wii U CPU was weaker than that of a PS3 and a 360. So, at the same time though, everything was a big unknown. Nobody knew what CPU, GPU, or whatever the Wii U had. There was a tweet by an IBM engineer claiming it had a Power 7 CPU, but one look at it and you can tell that it's a high-end server workstation CPU and IBM isn't really going to put an expensive big metal CPU into a Wii U. And when you look at the past and how much consoles cost and what's in them, it looks even more unlikely that Nintendo is going to take a big iron server CPU competing with the Xeon, Itanium, Spark, and that stuff, and shove it into a game console without making serious compromises. So, who was here to tell people what was in the CPU and GPU because Nintendo did not tell people what kind of CPU and GPU was used in the console? The people doing teardowns. Many people, like iFixit and Digital Foundry and the like, bought Wii U's for one purpose. To take them apart and to find out what is inside a Wii U. The first thing that happened was when the Wii U's MCM or multi-chip model was shown. With one tiny CPU die next to a bigger GPU die. This is a bad sign right off the bat as this suggests a weak low voltage CPU similar to that of say an Intel Atom. However, Nintendo would not tell customers, I mean consumers, the clock speeds of the processor or the GPU. Hackers with a group called Fail Overflow, the same group known in 2011 for releasing the PS3's keys before getting sued by Sony, so these are people with talent, came up with the clock speeds. 1.25 GHz for the CPU and 550 MHz for the GPU. Now of course this doesn't look so bad when you're putting this in mod when you're putting this next to the Xbox One and PS4 because they have 1.6 and 1.7 CP gigahertz CPUs. So a layman who has no knowledge of computing knowledge wouldn't find this a big deal, right? Well, that's before you find out what the CPU is based off of. The hackers found that the CPU design was instead of being based off of, say, the G4 or a newer power PC design that was more power efficient, such as what would have been the equivalent to a Core 2 Duo, or instead of being based off like a server CPU like was rumored, instead the new system was based off of the extremely old PowerPC 750 design, the same one used in the GameCube and the Wii, just modified to support multiprocessing and have three cores. Now keep in mind, anybody who's used an Apple product and knows a lot about Apple hardware knows what Apple branded the 750 as, the PowerPC G3, the same one used in Beige Macintoshes from years ago. And it's an old, old, old design that hasn't really been used much in the now in the modern times. And even when Apple was stopped making Power Max, they had long stopped using the G3 and had already moved on to the G4 and for a good reason. The G4 and the later designs are far more modern, and let me explain why. While Intel has done something similar with the Pentium M and stuff being based on the Pentium 3 instead of the heat-efficient Pentium 4, which gave them an escape route when the Pentium 4 hit its heat limits, they added features the Pentium 3 lacked, like SSE 2. The Wii U, on the other hand, doesn't add any G4 features to the power PC G3 other than multiprocessing. So, just for context, the Wii U is using a barely modified design designed to be 100% backwards compatible because that is how the Wii U CPU was designed 
for backwards compatibility. It's designed to be 100% backwards compatible with the Wii, all at the expense of having a CPU that's actually worth something. And for context, the Wii U's processor came out back when cell phones were analog and digital, back when um, many cell phones didn't even have color screens, and back when the coolest cell phones around were Nokias. You know those old monochrome Nokias that are supposedly indestructible? That is what processor the Wii U is using. One from that time. And why is the lack of Ultivet crucial? Well, many games will use Ultivec features or SSE features. For example, if you're playing a modern PC game, it probably requires at least SSE 2, SSE 3, or something like that. And Windows 8 requires SSE 2 as one of the minimums. While the Wii U, it lacks features like that. And you can even go on YouTube and find people comparing the G3, which lacked Altivec, with the G4, which has Altivec, and the G4 wins, especially in programs that use Altivec functionality, which makes a major difference when it comes to games, because many games use those features. There's a reason why features like MMX were first added for gamers, and why processors like the original Intel Pentium knocked out the competitors because it had stuff like MMX and stuff like... And stuff like a stronger floating point unit. The GPU for the Wii U has also proven incapable of handling next gen games as well, and die shots and the power draw of the console have confirmed this. Many times with GPUs, they have to have adequate cooling, or else they will have reliability issues, and along with having a power supply that can handle it. However, the Wii U's small enclosure shows that. It's probably not going to have a powerful GPU, and the die shots confirmed this. However, if the hardware was bad, the problems would have ended already. I mean, at least Nintendo can help developers try to eke out as much as they can out of the console, right? However, the problems don't just end with that. They go far beyond that. One developer whom wished to remain anonymous decided to do an article with Eurogamer about the Wii U and his thoughts as a developer. And it's an interesting read about tons of problems with the Nintendo and the console itself. Not only did the dev kits have tons of issues from the compiling, flat out not working, and then being slow when it did, even for a minor change, and not only was there skepticism from day one about the Wii U's power with the clock speed, but to make matters worse, Nintendo struggled to help said developer with things such as online or trying to even get games to compile. Despite praising the Wii U's GPU, which was, quote, leagues away even then from the Xbox One and PS4, the CPU was a nightmare to work with with regards to support. And Nintendo dropped the ball in there online as well. Now remember, with this whole time, the Wii U is supposed to be competing with the Xbox One and the PS4, not the 360 and the PS3, which this and the other comments prove is far more powerful. And even when you have stuff like the GPGPU, the GPGPU technology takes away resources from the GPU when it's in use, meaning it's even worse when they're trying to port a game from a 360. And even with Indies, Nintendo has been a nightmare to work with. With Microsoft and Sony, they welcome them with open arms. They have their own indie programs. They make it as easy as possible for any indie developer to get on their console. And they know that indie gaming is the new thing. So they're trying to get on it. Nintendo, an indie developer who shipped a few games, wanted an interview... And they brickwalled him. They didn't give him a PR guy to interview. So the person comes back with an article grilling Nintendo while Microsoft and Sony work with them and improve their PR possibly. While Microsoft has people like Major Nelson and Sony as their PlayStation blog promoting games, Nintendo has little, which brings me to my final point. Games just sell worse on the Wii U. From low install base to the fact that Nintendo doesn't promote their games on eShop as aggressively as Microsoft and Sony do, to the fact that the Wii U is a developer's nightmare with the weak CPU, an underpowered GPU, and hardware behind the Xbox 360 and PS3. Publishers are steering clear of it, stores don't want to carry it, 
the install base is low due to Nintendo either knowingly or unknowingly keeping their reputation the same as it was in the Wii era from the gamer console it was back in the 80s and early 90s to the kids and old people console. That's what the Wii U is associated with. And even if you're an indie developer who wants to put a basic game on eShop, Nintendo makes it harder to find games and get your game's exposure, charges a lot, and has system lock DRM. And in the article, the developer was told that his game shouldn't be expected to sell a lot on eShop. And not only that, but from indies to AAA developers, everybody reports low sales because of that. Even games like Sonic Lost World sold badly on it, and just a testament to how Nintendo is, even the PR person, the one person who's supposed to stand up for indies, can't use Twitter because he was sympathetic to somebody who demanded 3DS to remove the region lock. And the only official marketing for Nintendo is Nintendo Direct and their website, which puts more focus on games such as Hello Kitty, Cruisers, and Disney Planes than stuff su that you actually want. And that's a major point. And what does this all do to Nintendo in the end? It shows Nintendo is an out-of-touch company, trapped in the past, either a 90s or 2007 when their Wii was still relevant. Who cannot change when the times do? The signs are out there that nobody wants to purchase, sell, or develop for the console, especially when compared to the Xbox One and PS4. Sure, there are a few buying we use, but not to the point where stores want to carry the console. And the signs are out there. They're being ignored. Third parties, they have a choice now. If they're given a weak console with support and companies that barely help them out when they're trying to develop a game and run to snags, they take their business elsewhere, plain and simple. No GP GPU, no ES RAM, which also is in stuff like the PS2, PSP, and uh, the GameCube. Or other magic will help the Wii U. Even consumer-facing stuff, like the DRM or the E3 strategy of having, instead of an E3 presentation with ton of energy, a pre-recorded message, and putting your E3 games in some in so many Best Buy stores, not all of them. And keep in mind, Best Buy is part of a dying breed of chains. Even when they do stuff like that, or putting your demos in Pottery Barn, doing stuff like that proves that Nintendo is becoming more and more out of touch and nobody wants to buy the console for the simple facts that it relies on gimmicks, it lacks many of the major games, or the definitive versions of the big games if it has them at all. Stores are refusing to carry it and some stores like Tesco are already selling discounted Wii U Mario Kart 8 bundle pre-orders. And the console's not even out yet, which just says a lot on how bad the Wii U is doing right now. All while Nintendo ignores the signs and can't get developers to make games for consoles like Sony and Microsoft can and are doing right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.